Wheeler's identity e to the i pi plus 1 equals to 0 is often celebrated as the most beautiful equation in mathematics. Stanford University mathematics professor Dr. Keith Devlin once said like a Shakespearean sonnet that captures the essence of love or a painting that reveals the deeper beauty of human form. Wheeler's equation delves into the very depths of existence. Surveys conducted by popular journals and scientific magazines such as the Mathematical Intelligence and the Physics World have named Euler's identity the most beautiful theorem in mathematics. But what makes it so special? This equation beautifully ties together some of the most important constants in mathematics. In this video, I will give you a brief introduction to each constant and explain their relationship visually. First, we have the number e. This is an irrational number, meaning its decimal expansion neither repeats nor terminates, so it cannot be represented as the ratio of integers. We can understand e in terms of compound interest, as the limit of continuously compounded interest. As the frequency of compounding approaches infinity, you get the maximum amount of growth over time. e appears in the many areas of math and science. Population growth, exponential growth and decay. In probability and statistics, it appears in the study of normal distribution curve. Next is I, the imaginary unit whose square is negative 1. At first glance, it might seem abstract to consider a number whose square is negative. But this concept has a wide range of applications. I is the fundamental building block of complex numbers, expressed as a plus IB, where A and B are real numbers. This extension helps solve equations like x squared plus 1, which have no real solutions. Beyond mathematics, I appears in electrical engineering for EC circuit analysis. It also appears in Schrodinger's equation, which describes the behavior of quantum particles. Then we have pi which equals the ratio of circle circumference to its diameter. It's the another irrational number and shows up everywhere circles are involved. It also appears in physical equations such as those describing electric force, oscillation periods, and the uncertainty principle. In probability and statistics, the area under the bell curve is square root of pi. The number 1 and 0 known as the multiplicative and additive identity is a fundamental building block in mathematics. The seeming paradoxical relationship is truly mind-boggling. When you raise irrational number e to the power of i times another irrational number pi, you get an integer, negative 1. Adding 1 to this gives 0. So what's really going on here and where does this identity come from? Euler's identity is named after the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, one of the greatest minds in the history of mathematics. It is a special case for Euler's formula, t e to the i theta equals to cos theta plus i sin theta, evaluated at theta equals to pi. To understand this formula, imagine a unit circle in a complex plane. Consider a point on the circle at angle theta. This point has coordinates cos theta, comma sine theta. Now, each point on the circle represents a complex number z, with cos theta as a real part and sine theta as an imaginary part. As we change the angle theta, the points move along the circle. According to Euler's formula, the same point can also be represented in exponential form, e to the high theta. It turns out that representing it in exponential form makes it easier to work with complex numbers. Let's see what happens if you rotate this point by pi. The point moves to coordinate minus 1 comma 0, which means e to the i pi is negative 1. Now, you might be wondering how do we actually prove Euler's mind-bending formula. If you recall from our previous discussion on Taylor series, Non-polynomial functions like e to the x, cos x, and sine of x can be expressed as infinite polynomial sums. For example, the expansion for e to the x looks like this. As you can see, more terms will include the closer the infinite sum gets to tracing out the original e to the x curve. 
The same applies for cos x and sin x as well. Here is where it gets really interesting. It turns out this infinite series expansion works not just for regular numbers but complex numbers too. So let's replace x with i x in the expansion, where i is our imaginary fin, the square root of negative 1. When evaluating higher powers of i, you can picture the unit circle and how the line moves as we raise the powers. Initially, the line is at i. i is the square root of negative 1. i squared, which equals negative 1. So, the line moves to negative 1. i squared times i is i cubed, which is minus i. Similarly, i to the 4 is 1, and so on. You might observe each time we raise the power of i, the line moves by 90 degrees, cycling back and forth between 1, minus 1, i, and minus i. So, even powers are free of i, and the odd ones are not. Splitting the expansion into two groups, one free of i's and the one with i's, we observe the terms without i form the infinite series for cos x. By taking out i common from the odd ones, the terms form the series for sin x. Understanding Euler's formula isn't just about appreciating mathematical beauty, it has practical uses too. You might have encountered this problem in physics classes. The result in a force of n equally spaced vectors acting at a point is zero, where the instructor explained that because of symmetry. However, for a mathematician, simply stating that symmetry makes it so isn't quite enough. There is a beautiful and rigorous mathematical proof for this phenomena that applies to any number of factors n. This can be elegantly demonstrated using Euler's formula, which we will explain in detail in our next video. Until then, stay tuned. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content like this. Thank you.